Hello and welcome back to the course on Python programming. I hope you had a chance to practice with what we learned in the previous tutorial. It was a very powerful skill and a very important one to have. And hopefully you're going great so far. Today we're going to learn how to access individual elements. Interesting. I thought we already talked about that, you might say. I thought we already talked about looking at rows and columns. And yes, indeed we did but we never actually accessed an individual element or cell in a data frame. So how would you do it? What's your first instinct? Well, you'd say stats two common two, something like that, right? Uh, because we know that in matrices, these, this approach works. If I run that, I will get an error. Interesting, why doesn't it work? Let's type in our favorite comment. Error, why? Why is it happening? Well, first thing I wanted to mention is that we haven't talked about this yet. And also this tutorial, if you find it complicated, don't worry about it. You can always come back if you ever need to learn this skill. You can always come back and relearn it. But otherwise, when it's not such an important skill to have. And that's why we're only covering it off now. And that's why we haven't talked about it yet. Because if you think about it, with data frames, you're rarely going to access individual elements. You're mostly going to be using filters. You're going to be visualizing them. You're going to be subsetting them. But how often do you actually need a certain specific value from a data frame? Or in Excel from a table? From a table in Excel, how often do you actually need to pull out just one single value? Most of the time, you're working with lots of values. But nevertheless, it does happen sometimes. So that's why I thought it would be important to cover off this uh, topic. And once again, you can always return to it if you need to use the skill further down the track. All right, so here we go. Let's look at our data frame, stats.head. Uh, there it is. And the functions that we need have specific names. They are going, they're going to allow us to access individual elements. There are two functions. We need the at function, or let's call it the dot at and the dot i at. So what does this one do? This one is for labels. So important here, well, it's important, we'll, we'll put it separately, important. Even integers are treated as labels. And here, this one is for integer location. So what does this all mean and why, how does it work? And how do you remember these names? Well, the way I remember them is at as in at, it's at that cell. You'll see how we'll use it just now, but it will allow us to access elements at specific cells. That's why I remember it as at. So it's at that cell or it's at that cell. It's at that cell. And I at is, you'll notice we'll be indexing by an integer. So we're looking at an integer. We're using an integer to go and find something at that cell, at that cell and so on. So I know it might be a bit uh, confusing right now, but nevertheless, let's give it a go. And I think it will all come fall into place. So we'll say stats, and instead of saying three, four, which we know will give us an error, we'll say stat, uh, instead of saying stats three, four, which we know will give us an error, we're going to say stats dot I at three, four. Let's run that, and we'll get upper middle income. So let's see how that worked. It went uh, third row, fourth column. All right, so zero, that's the first one. Or, well, actually zero, <laughs> zero, one, two, three, third row, that's that. And then fourth column, one, two, uh, zero, one, two, three, four. Fourth column, upper middle income. Wonderful. Let's try another one. Let's say stats dot I at, and then we'll say, let's say row number zero and column number one. What is that going to give us? What do you think? Zero, one, country code for Aruba. Row number zero, column number zero, one, ABW. There it is. That's what we got. Wonderful. So that's how IAT works. At this stage, you notice I actually counted. I didn't just look at the number here and you will know, you'll see why exactly in a second, but it actually counts, physically counts the rows from the top, counts the columns from the left, and it gives you the result there. That's why it's called the integer because it counts. It counts with those integers. Now, how do we use at? That was IAT. How do we use at? Well, what at does is it looks at labels. So instead of counting, it will look at the labels and the labels here are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. They are integers, indeed, they are integers, but they not necessarily have to always be in this place. And you'll see that in a second. Those are our integers, those are our labels for rows, and these are our labels for columns. So to use at, you need to use labels. So let's say we want birth rate, 
And here we're going to say, first we need the row, right? So we're going to say row number two, which is the label number two. You just, you don't even count this time. You just look for the two over here. Okay. And then we'll look for column birth rate. So we're supposed to get 45.985. So let's do birth rate, run that 45.9849999. Beautiful. That's our approach with labels. You can try another one for yourself if you like. But what I wanted to show you now is the reason why we need at, right? You, you think uh, you'd think that you can just do everything with at. Well, at or I at, it, they can be useful in different cases. Sometimes you might know exactly which number row and number column you need. Sometimes you might know the labels. But there's a very specific difference between this value and this value. Let's have a look at that, the way they're treated, why we need dot at. So let's create a new matrix. We'll say subset 10, and we'll say all of the values, every 10th value. And let's have a look at that sub 10. So I'm not even doing the head function here. I'm just printing out the whole object, the whole data frame. So you can see that we got 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, uh, every 10th uh, row in this data frame that we had got subsetted into sub 10. Okay, and now why did we do that? What is this going to show us? Well, let's have a look. Let's say sub 10 dot I at 10 zero, right? So we're saying, give me the 10th row or row with index 10 and the column with index zero there, wherever they cross, give me that cell. And let's see what it'll bring us. It'll give us Libya. Now, which you would think is if you do sub 10 I at and you do 10 and then what is the country name here? Country name or what is the column column zero name? It's country name. You'd think that this would give you the same result, right? You're just basically saying 10, 10, replace the number of the column with the, with the name of the column. If you run that, different result. Very interesting. Why is that? Well, because of their behavior. So what does I at do? I at, it actually counts. Remember what we talked about? It counts out 10. It goes... 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. In this new object, in this new data frame, this is the row with index 10. And that's why it gives you this row and this column, column with index 0, Libya, or country name, the, they, uh, their intersection is Libya. That's why you get Libya. On sub 10 dot at, You've got 10 and then country name. But this time, as we discussed, let's go up to the top. As we discussed, dot at looks for labels. It doesn't care about their sequence. It cares about the label. So it's going to look for the label 10. As you can see, label 10 is here and country name. So you get Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan. There we are. And this behavior of sub 10 at, or actually not sub 10 at, this behavior of a subsetted data frame is very similar to what you get in R. In R, also when you filter a data frame uh, or subset it this way, what you get is um, these labels, they don't get updated. So definitely watch out for that. If you're going to be using at and iat, then know the difference and use the correct function when you need to access either by integer, so when you need to actually physically count which row and column, or when you need to access through the labels. There's a big difference and sometimes it can affect the final outcome. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed that tutorial and now you know how to access individual elements of a data frame. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, happy coding.